Today I'm going to show you how to embed a QR code in your 3D print using your slicer. You can do it in the CAD program as well, but the beauty of doing it in the slicer is that it's very easy to add to any 3D print and anybody can do it because slicers are free. So today I'm going to show you how I made this, which is two layers of PLA white, very flexible, works really, really well. Um, it's a 0.12 millimeter layer height with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So two layers of white PLA, one, two layers of black PLA, and it makes this beautiful QR code, 50 by 50 millimeters. And I wanted to see how far I could push it. So I got this right here is uh, 25 by 25 millimeters. And I even pushed it down to 20 by 20. Now this guy, with the amount of data that's encoded is probably the smallest you can go with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You could probably go smaller. Uh, what's pretty cool is with SD card here for size, um, you, you could put this on an SD card and have a QR code. And it's very thin, it's you know less than half a millimeter and pretty flexible. And then this one was a huge mistake. So I turned off the prime tower and because there's so little material in it, it printed the entire thing in white, so I've got four layers. But, and you can't read it, but you can. And it's actually really cool, but we're gonna talk about that later. So let's get over to Orca Slicer and I'll show you how to, how to make this QR code on your 3D print. The first step is actually to get your QR code. So I'm going to grab a URL and go to this QR code, qrcodegenerator.org. It has this transparent background feature, which matters. Otherwise, you have to delete parts of the SVG, so it's just easier. We're going to download as an SVG, and that's going to make all the difference. Now, you can import an SVG into Orca Slicer by using the import button, and there's your SVG. But it imports it with every single pixel as its own part. Now, you can take all that as an entire thing, and you can export to one STL, and then you can bring it back in. And that's not a horrible thing to do. It, it is a workflow that, that can work and might work in certain situations. But we're gonna do it the easy way, which is you just grab it, drag it, and drop the SVG into it. And you get this pop-up here that allows you to uh, change settings and make configurations. Now, because it's locked, when you type in the dimension on one side, it translates it to the other. You don't actually have to delete like I did here and type it in. It, it will just carry through, right? So cool. And then you can actually set the depth of your feature, which we're going to set down to 0.2 because in my testing, that's what worked. I'm setting it at a 0.12 millimeter layer height for best resolution. And so that 0.2, uh, along with the other features based on my testing, got me to two layers of the background and two layers of the actual QR code. So the first thing I did there was check the world coordinates and make sure I knew the position of that so that when I added the cube primitive, I know where it should be, right? So we've added the, the cube is ultimately going to be our background, but we need to adjust our colors so that the QR code is black and the background is white in this particular case, right? So each feature now we've got that sorted out. So we'll go back to our cube and you can change the size of your primitive. You can grab the handles and drag it, but to be a little bit more precise, I'm going to go in here. I've turned off uniform scale intentionally so that I can change the X, Y, and Z separately. In my testing, I found that using 0.3 for the height actually got you to two layers of the bottom and then two layers of the top, okay? But the problem is with the features the way they are, you grab them and pull them up and they will just drop back to the build plate every single time, right? And so the solution to that in Orca Slicer is to go in here, select them all, and click Assemble. Once they are an assembly, then you can change the height uh, and you can actually make it so there's a gap between them, which is a problem that's not going to print, um, but it will, it will slice that way, it just it will create a problem. So you need to be aware of that, um, that A, that is the thing that you can do because it allows you to do this feature but B, to be careful about it. And so what you want here is you want to put the top just on top of it, not into it, not buried into it, um, because I want to have a clean layer change so that there are less changes. So if I embed it into it, then you have to do two filament swaps. 
Whereas if it's just sitting on top of it, you only do one filament change, right? And as always, I like to look through the layers step by step by step, make sure it's what I want before I print. It's the best way to know is show the modeling and the modeling on Orca Slicer is so good that you can find a whole lot of problems by just looking at your model before you print it. That looks really good. It's four layers, which is what I was going for. I'm gonna show you now how to now take that QR code and put it on just an object. So we're gonna grab a thing off multi-board. I love multi-board, still working on mine. And I'm just gonna grab the object. I'm gonna download it, um, bring it into Orca Slicer, and then I will show you on a separate uh, build plate how to then incorporate and bring in your SVG. So we've created another build plate uh, with that additional button at the top. Here's our part. Um, it takes a long time to slice, so using the magic of editing, I'm just going to fast forward through that a little bit so that you don't have to sit through the entire slice the way I did. So here's our part. Um, I don't want it clear. I, I want it to be white. Uh, so we're going to change that out by typing 4 after selecting the part. Now I have a white part. Cool. I can slice it. Once again, using the magic of editing, we're going to fast forward that bit a little bit. And here we are. This is what our plate looks like. And now we're going to embed a QR code into that plate. So we're going to drag and drop. And once again, it brings up this dialog that we can change the size. We can change the depth. Uh, however, we won't be able to change the height. And notice in the bottom right where it says warning, it's telling us that we have two parts colliding because they're set on top of each other. That's not what we want, right? Um, we want to adjust it and we don't want them to have see it as a collision. We'll have to do the assembly trick again. But first step is uh, we're sizing it, and you can see that because it snapped to the build plate and it's 10 millimeters tall, it's coming through the part, right? So I could just do the assembly here and then print it like this, but that's obviously not what I'm looking for, not what I'm going for, and these tiny little features sticking up will be a problem if they're too tall. But what I'm going to do is first assemble it, and then I'll bring it up, pull it out of the part, change the height to what I want, so now it's easier to move it around and I won't lose it inside the part and have to go digging after it, right? So there we go. We've got our QR code scaled to what I want. This is one's actually a little bit smaller. It's a 20 by 20. And why would you do it on a tray like this? Well, you could do like a, a Wi-Fi QR code on, um, on a tray for, you know, when people bring their phones in and right there you have guests. Here's a, a tray or a shelf or what have you. Hit this QR code, get on the Wi-Fi, right? So something like that. And you can either set it on top, like I did before, or you can push it down and embed it. So we're gonna start by setting it on top. Once again, fast forwarding through the slice. And here it is. Uh, I will point out that you see these little white corners. They're not actually going to be white. That's uh, where the nozzle is starting or stopping. And so it, it does make it a little bit difficult to see what's happening here because those little white dots interfere with the pattern, but they're not going to be white. All right, so, and you'll see if you look at it at 20 uh, millimeters at this density of text that there are some areas where uh, it's not filled in as much as I would like and it could cause problems uh, with, with what I encoded and in my testing, it worked with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but if you wanna go to tight QR codes, you're gonna have to go to a smaller nozzle. So there we go, that's the, uh, the part on a 50 by 50 spot that's embedded on anything that you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and size them down. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that after the fact. Um, but uh, real quick before we get into that, I do also want to show you that, yes, this can be embedded. It does not have to sit on top. That is entirely up to you. Um, and all you have to do is go back to your assembly, edit your position, and just push it into the part until uh, it's really hard to get it just right. Okay. You just want it to be poking out, but not too much, but you don't want it to fall into the part. So it takes a little bit of uh, fiddling with it until you get it just right. And we'll go through a reslice and ta-da. Um, now you'll notice that because this is embedded in the part, there is more detail around it, which might potentially cause problems and it might make it so that the smaller ones are not as crisp. So 
again, if that's something that you're interested in me doing some more testing and print on prints on, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I had really good luck with the, it actually has texture because the top two layers have gaps in between the bits. And it, it's a really cool look. I like the texture. I, I like the feel of it. Um, but it's entirely up to you as to what you want to do. So back to this plate, we're resizing it to make it go smaller as part of the tests that I showed you to see how small you can go. And with the uniform scale unchecked, you need to make sure that you actually hit your X and Y and change your part size. And then the cube, the, the height is not changing. We're only changing the width of these parts, right? So the height is not changing. So you can just go in there and type in new widths and the heights stay the same. And you can make those adjustments in real time. And you can see I've still got those four layers stacked. It all works. It all works. And you see the bottom two layers are all white. The top two layers are all black. Um, there's no white printed in the black layers, no black printed in the white layers. Uh, it, it all looks good in the slicer and uh, I'm going to kick it off to print. So let's get back in and we're going to scale it to 25, which is half of 50. And what I ultimately ended up testing because if it works at 25, it's probably going to work at 30, probably going to work at 40, probably et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I uh, jumped up to 25 and looks pretty good. I see good fill on all of the bits and features. So kicking that off, we're going to print it and uh, take a look at it and see if we like it. Click on the clicking on the corner and labeling it as 25 millimeters. Uh, you can just click on these plates and name them in Orca Slicer, which is a really nice feature to have, especially if you're doing multiple tests of something. So if you're playing with settings a little bit and looking at a part this way versus that way, you can set up all the build plates and then name them for all the different configurations. So we're going to do that here. And now this one, I'm going to uh, scrunch it down to 20 millimeters uh, and looking at the Looking at the part, um, there we go, 20. Look at the part, uh, it's it's about as small as I think I can go with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and at least this level of data, this amount of uh, data density, because uh, when you slice it, you start to see more gaps that are noticeable. But we're gonna go into the text feature here and we're going to add a label so that I can remember later that this one's 20, 20 millimeters. Always label everything because I forget stuff. Just looking for something that looks like it'll print uh, well and be clear, but also very small. So we'll get that feature in here. And then you select the feature and we're going to change the color of that feature. We don't want to print it in pet G because that won't work with our PLA at all. So switch that over to black and then, uh, position it and once again it wants to snap because it's not part of the assembly yet so you have the part holding control go ahead and select assembly and then you can right click and assemble now it's been moved up into the assembly now you can take that part and you can move it to the face and you can also make it float in space which is a bit of a problem so you need to make sure that you position everything as best as you properly can possibly can so there's our 20 millimeter label and I've got it pretty much where I want it X and Y and then we'll just drop the Z so that it matches and lays on top of this part, which is harder than it looks. Now this is one of those places where it is nice with a piece of CAD software where you design a sketch and you build off the face so that you can make sure that these are, are touching. Uh, you can also create them as separate bodies and, and all those features. but it's really nice to be able to do this kind of thing in the slicer. And it's amazing how you can use SVGs to make, to turn two dimensional objects into three dimensional objects. So I knew that the slicers could take in steps, but the fact that they can take in SVGs is, is really cool. So, and that enables this, uh, this feature and technique. Actually, that makes me think I should work on some logos, but anyway, I wanted to show you this mistake. So the entire thing was printed in white. There are no color changes, but it is just the same as the other ones where there's two layers of the uh, the white and then there's two more layers with the bits right 
and so you can't read it but you can and that's really cool and it's really hard to get it just right we'll see if i can kind of get the camera to ah, there you go almost can almost see it um normally what has been working is i'll hold it up so if you hold it up to the light you can actually see the shadow of the extra layers so comment if you want me to explore this i've kind of got this crazy idea of basically like a business card that you can scan with a qr code but it's completely invisible unless you hold it up to the light the the secret ink technique if you will so like i said comment down below if you want to see some more videos on that but sometimes mistakes turn out to be really cool How do we get this to work? Man, this is harder than it looks. Nope. Can't. Well, you sort of can. Uh, we can just get the camera to lock on it.